femur, distal, Salter Harris type 2, SH2, epiphyseal fracture. Fixation using two 4mm self drilling, self tapping cannulated screws. Pediatric distal femoral epiphyseal fractures are most commonly Salter Harris type 2 fractures that result from direct trauma to children with an open physis. The trauma typically occurs with some degree of rotation, most commonly a valgus type force or a hyperextension force. In addition, the metaphyseal wedge can have different sizes, which influences the treatment. If the wedge is very small, the fracture looks like a Salter Harris type 1 fracture and can be fixed with two crossed K wires. If there is a large metaphyseal component, this may be transfixed, ideally with two cannulated screws. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to describe the fracture pattern, explain the distal femoral approach, perform the fracture reduction and fixation, and anticipate possible complications such as growth arrest. The factors influencing clinical indications are size of the metaphyseal wedge, displacement of the fragment, age of the child, and additional injuries such as polytrauma. In this case, the 12-year-old patient was involved in a car accident and presented in an emergency room with pain in the right knee. The AP and lateral X-rays show a Salter Harris type 2 fracture of the distal femur with a lateral metaphyseal wedge. Closed anatomical reduction was achieved and the fracture fixed using two 4.5 mm cannulated lag screws inserted through the lateral metaphyseal wedge. Clinically, the screw diameter must correspond to the size of the bone. The patient is positioned supine on a radiolucent table. A small bolster can be placed beneath the buttock to prevent external rotation of the lower extremity. The image shows the midline of the femur. The required instruments include the guide wires, diameter 1.25 mm with threaded tip, the cannulated hexagonal screwdriver for the 4.0 mm cannulated screws, and the depth gauge. The entry points are marked on the anterior side across the metaphyseal segment and on the lateral side matching the central line of the shaft. The entry points marked in yellow are in the midline of the femoral shaft and not on the central line of the condyle. In the clinical situation, a 2.0 or 2.5 mm K wire is inserted into the condylar segment and used as a joystick to assist and control reduction, which should be verified under image intensification. Once correct reduction has been achieved, the first guide wire for the compression screw is inserted through the metaphyseal wedge parallel to the growth plate. The size of the wedge determines if a second screw is necessary. In this exercise, the metaphyseal wedge is large enough so that a second screw is recommended in order to secure the fragment. The second wire is inserted approximately one centimeter proximal to the first, perpendicular to the fracture plane. After the screw length has been measured, the screw is slid over the guide wire. For ease of insertion, the 4mm self-drilling, self-tapping cannulated screw is passed directly over the guide wire without using the screwdriver. The screwdriver is then passed over the guide wire to advance the screw. The second screw is inserted in the same manner. An additional washer may be required depending on the quality of the bone or the preference of the surgeon. Note that in this exercise, no washer has been used. The fracture fixation is achieved 
and the guide wires are removed. You should now be able to describe the fracture pattern, explain the distal femoral approach, perform the fracture reduction and fixation, and anticipate possible complications such as growth arrest.